March 30, 1981, John Hinckley was a 25-year-old with romantic delusions convinced that actress Jodie Foster would be impressed if he killed the president. But who really is John Hinckley Jr. and what is his story? Hinckley grew up in Dallas, Texas and had a seemingly normal childhood. He got good grades and did well in sports, but in high school he began to recede into isolation, choosing to listen to music alone in his room rather than maintain an interest in friends and sports. After dropping out of college, he moved to California to become a songwriter. It was here that he saw the movie Taxi Driver at least 15 times. This developed into an obsession with Jodie Foster. In the summer of 1980, Hinckley read an interview about Jodie Foster. The 18-year-old actress was taking a sabbatical from Hollywood to attend Yale University. So Hinckley told his parents that he was going back to college, but at Yale, not Texas Tech. He sent her multiple letters and poems determined to prove his love for her. He decided the best way to do this was to assassinate a president, so he began to stalk Jimmy Carter. Then, Hinckley began to target Reagan in the belief that by making history, Foster would see him as an equal. President Reagan was struck in the chest and lower right arm, resulting in a punctured lung and heavy internal bleeding. Press Secretary James Brady was struck in the head, resulting in permanent brain damage. Hinckley was found not guilty reason of insanity on all 13 accounts. The shooting put the public in a frenzy, resulting in changes in when the insanity plea can be used and the start of the gun control movement. Ultimately, Hinckley was sent to St. Elizabeth's Mental Hospital. It's been 30 years now since President Reagan was shot outside the Washington Hilton Hotel. Now the man who pulled the trigger, John Hinckley Jr., may be about to gain more unsupervised time away from the mental hospital. Where it was actually the second time in my life that an attempt on a president's life made. The first one in 63, where we lost our president, and then that, yeah. I was horrified. They're actually talking about giving the man who shot Reagan more free time, and completely unsupervised. How does that make you feel? Well, it irritates me. I think the guy should be tried for murder, and yet he's going free. <laughs> so what do you think it says about the insanity plea if people who are found not guilty might go free one day? Well, I think the insanity plea is, to me, you should be able to convict somebody as guilty by reason of insanity, not, not, guilty. not guilty. While his lawyers claim he is not dangerous, by all accounts, Hinckley is a sociopath. He has never expressed remorse and does not seem to understand what he did wrong. Even if the mental institution has cured him of his obsession with Jodie Foster, it is likely that he still has sociopathic traits. To release someone who basically has the mind of a child would be dangerous and in no way what the insanity plea was designed for.